the mission itself changed. I think it's an extension of what I've been doing for since 1985 and maybe okay. even before that. Um, it's just that the scale continued to grow. I mean, even with my YouTube channel where I put my lectures in rather primitive technological form because I was just using an iPad and, you know, a lapel mic. I had a million views by April 2016 and, you know, that really made me think because I worked with TVO, of course, and, yeah. and my lectures were popular with big ideas which showcased a number of public intellectuals. I think I had five lectures in the top 20 or something like that, so I knew that there was, and I was getting a certain amount of recognition in public for that, not, not a lot, but yeah. You know, enough, and then from a very wide variety of people, you know, which was quite, quite interesting. Yeah. When I hit the million mark on YouTube, I really thought about that because, well, I don't know what to do with that figure. I don't know how to conceptualize it in context because a million is a lot of people. It's, you know, yeah. it's 20 <laughs> football stadiums full of people. It's an overwhelmingly best-selling book. It's, yeah. it's, it's far more people than you'd teach in your life. And I thought, well, what, and, and, and it wasn't cute cat videos, you know, and this was back when YouTube was still a developing yeah, force, yeah, let's say, yeah, that's right. and something to be sort of ignored in some sense yeah. because of because of its humble beginning. I thought, well, what the hell is this YouTube? What, what are we doing here? And then it struck me that, well, this was a Gutenberg revolution that we were experiencing, that the spoken word was now as permanent and as immediate, more immediate than the printed word and just as permanent. Mm -hmm. and with a much larger audience because more people, as far as I can tell, can listen than can read. And even with my book, um, a tremendous percentage of my books have oh, been right. sold in aud audio form. So I really started to think about YouTube at that point and I suppose that was one of the things that drove me in my foolish curiosity to make those political videos that I made yeah. uh, in October, which was the first time I'd ever tried something like that and that was in some sense I wouldn't call it a whim but you know I woke up at three in the morning because I was so irritated about this bill and attempt to force a certain type of language usage and I, I could see what was behind that quite mm -hmm. clearly I thought well you know this really is annoying me to death and often what I would do when something was annoying me to death was get up and write but I thought well I'll make a YouTube video and see what happens you've got you've got a hold of something yeah. Let's say it's YouTube, and you think you know what it is. You don't. You don't have any idea what it is, and neither does anyone else. And, and, and that's certainly still the case. We have no idea what these multiple technologies are doing to us, but I can tell you that YouTube is a, an, an overwhelming force, and it's becoming more and more powerful day by day. I've, I've especially seen that in countries, Slovenia was a good example, yeah. where no one really trusts the mainstream press. All the young people do, and not so young either. Pretty much everybody under 35, I would say, all they watch is YouTube, and that's yeah. the case all over the world. I think on my YouTube channel, my videos have been watched 110 million times, and <laughs> the total viewership is probably, it, it, like because people keep cutting them up and distributing yeah, them, I, which is something else that can be done on YouTube, right? You can have a dialogue, right, where people yeah, yeah. edit and make their own commentaries, and the total for that would be at least 500 million. Sure, God. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Dear God. It it yeah, well, it, it, the thing is, the funny thing is, is that it, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel good. You know, and that might be a reflection of my general state of mind, which is very unsettled mm -hmm. at the moment for the reasons that I told you and well because of all of everything that's happened over the last few years but to get a taste of the depth of yeah. despair that that can be ameliorated with not much more than you know some some words of encouragement some some statement that you know you as a human being aren't intrinsically worthless worthless and that you have a spirit worth preserving and that the things that you do in your life that you do correctly are important. It's like people are literally dying yeah. for lack of that. And I, I mean that, I mean that. No, uh, I know. I know honestly, I, I don't know how many people have told me and these are very hard things to hear. It's been hundreds of people because I, I meet people after each of my lectures, you know, who've told me that yeah. They are still alive because they watched my lectures or because they read my book. or, And then they usually have a good story to tell, you know, about what sort of hell they happened to be in six months earlier and what they did to pull themselves out and how that's brought their family back together or 
help them advance in their career or got them out of bed yeah. or stopped them from using heroin or be, being alcoholic. And right. One of the things I pointed out with Bill C-16 was that it contained multiple internal contradictions, especially in the background policies, which I had read in quite a bit of detail. They were formulated in Ontario, um, although the federal government uh, removed the link on their website to those policies after I pointed out the fact that that link existed, which I thought was unbelievably underhanded and mm. still believe so. Carl Jung once said that internal contradictions are played out in the world as fate. The thing about propositions, if they're accurate, is that they represent real states of being in the world. And okay. if you entertain a set of propositions that are internally contradictory, then you're going to run yourself into all sorts of sharp objects and dead ends. And that's exactly what's happening. And every time, and I've thought this really for three years, every time you think that there's no possible way that this can get more absurd, then one more example comes up where it's more absurd. And I would say the situation in BC is precisely that. I mean, one of the women that he's persecuting because I think he and this terrible bureaucracy is persecuting was a immigrant woman I believe she was Muslim who had a an aesthetics yep. business in her own home in and as a consequence of of the negative publicity or the publicity and the pressure she shut down her business shut, you yes, know? and has. God only knows what that means for her family and well and for her and, and you were asking about courage earlier you know one of the things that I have watched quite frequently is the way that people respond to being mobbed on Twitter. Yeah. You know, now I've almost stopped looking at Twitter. It's been about three months that I've taken a Twitter hiatus, let's say. I still post. I don't even have my password anymore. I send what I want to post to a third party and they post it because it keeps me out of the... An antiseptic distance. That's right, exactly. And, and, and that's exactly the right way of thinking about it. People civilized people and, and i mean that in in, yeah. in civilized socialized people cannot tolerate being mobbed because and there's a reason for that you see you you said with regards to the british columbia uh, human rights tribunal you know if there's 16 people on one side and one on the other you might be thinking that the 16 people are right more or less right right but then you think think of the situation where you've said something on twitter and you know Six a thousand, thousand people yeah. mob you publicly your first response is going to be to examine your own conscience and see yep. how you transgressed. It's not really much different psychologically. I mean, it's lesser, I suppose, but it's not that much different than waking up one morning and coming to your door and finding a mob of your neighbors angrily aggregated yep. on your lawn. You know, it's a terrible shock for people and really hurts them. You know, they're often, they're often by all accounts, you know, damaged for lengthy periods of time by this. And, and their first impulse is to apologize which is which is truly the wrong thing like the right yeah, thing it is, to do is stand well the right thing to do is to understand that if you haven't done anything wrong you have, you don't apologize now that's a very difficult yeah, it's very difficult and then to wait because if you wait 2 weeks people will come to your defense yeah, they will. but it takes the people who will come to your defense 2 weeks to get their act together where it takes the activists who are unbelievably organized 15 seconds to mob oh. you well, it was dreadful, I mean, especially the first couple of months because, well, it has been since then, but the attention was unbelievably intense. I mean, I had, there were days upon days where there were reporters lined up coming into the house one after the other. And, and, and that, that's, that really hasn't stopped. I mean, it stopped, let's say, in the last two months since the end of March, however long ago that is, because mm -hmm. I've shut myself off because of family health trouble that's very serious. I don't think I've ever adjusted to it. What's made it bearable, I would say, and, and some of it's been very good, you know. Yeah, it, I know it, I mean, it's taken my life, which was fairly broad. I, yeah. I had a fairly broad range of experiences, partly because I'm a clinical psychologist, and mm -hmm. you know, it's taken it from good and bad to yeah. great and yeah. unbearable. Yo-yo between those states, what's helped well, the first thing is, is that, you know, I determined right from the beginning, I was going to say carefully mm -hmm. what I believed to be true because there wasn't a safer route than that. It's interesting. You know, that, that in the final analysis, it wasn't certain that anything would protect me. Whether that would work or not was debatable, but there wasn't a better option. Yeah, I can understand and, and, it. And I right. believe that, you know, yeah. I, I still believe that. 
And I think the success of what I've done is an indication of that. The success of my book, say, which is yeah. also absolutely overwhelming. I mean, it's, it's impossible to, you know, it, it's, it's fulfilled. And the lectures and the podcasts as well, and the YouTube videos, they've fulfilled a need, which also is something that's very difficult for me to, to reconcile myself to. You know, I mean, even on, every time I walk down the street, yeah. someone stops me, someone stopped me on the way here, you yeah, know. Sure. And, as opposed to my treatment at the hand of a minority of journalists, which has been atrocious upon occasion, and, and academics as well. The treatment I receive from people in public is so positive that it's almost unbearable. I've become opened up to the trouble that people have in a way that far exceeds even what I experienced as a clinical psychologist. Yeah, yeah. You know, last year, my wife and I went to 160 cities. Whew. Yeah, it was, well, we figured we better make hey, while well, the sun shines. Well, you get caught up in exciting and worthwhile, and the demand was there, you know. And, and um, I enjoy lecturing, and I used the opportunity. I delivered a different lecture every night, and I used the opportunity to think, you know, and, and to communicate, which, of course, is what you're, and in a, in a psychologically, in a manner that I believed would be mm -hmm. psychologically helpful, but it was also, I think, and I don't know exactly what the cumulative effect has been mm -hmm. on me. I had no idea the degree to which so people many were people. dying for a word of encouragement. So many. And if you haven't yet done so and you feel like doing it, hit the subscribe button.